are you doing today? It's great. Great. I'm great too. So, you ready? Ready. Do you see this sweater here? Anybody know where this sweater's from? Yeah. Where is it from? <laughs> okay, so we're going to jump right in. Okay. Um, can you please tell us about uh, your position at Macy's and what it is that you do day to day? Sure. First of all, thank you so much for moderating us. We both had a fangirl moment when we found out it was you. So we're super, super excited. And thank you to Harlem Sashimro for having us. Um, my name is Keelan Evans. I'm the Vice President of Sustainability at Macy's. You know, I've been at Macy's for just over 11 years, and in my experience, I've been in merchandising, I've been in stores, and most recently in supply chain. So the last 18 months, really coming out of the start of COVID, I was actually the chief of staff for our supply chain leadership team. And through that experience, I got to start to work with our sustainability team, understand the work that they were undertaking, the opportunities in front of us, and how we really needed to figure out how to embed sustainability within the organization. Okay. Um, so really what I bring to the team, I'm about four weeks in, is an understanding of the company and how to navigate the company, how to work within the company and tie the strategies together. And so my team is actually teaching me a ton about sustainability every single day. And that's really what my work entails right now is learning more, tying it back to the company and figuring out how we really embed it within everything that we do. That's awesome. Simone. Good afternoon, Misa and mm -hmm. everyone here. My name is Simone Harris-Laws and I have been with Macy's for about 17 years. I started in our customer service division, so imagine if you had to call customer service or email or live chat, I was part of that team responsible for responding back to you and making sure that when we connected that that was the first and last time you had to call. <laughs> and uh, you know, I, I think in that role it really helped me get a true appreciation for the voice of the customer you know, and, and really understanding what are those friction points when customers are shopping with us and how to build trust with customers. Um, and so then I moved into a role uh, where I led our Star Rewards Credit and Loyalty Program for eight years. And in, in that role, I like to say, that's when we really think about how do we hug our best customers? Uh, I was constantly thinking of ways of saying, well, what, what would make customers want to shop and, and stay loyal to Macy's versus elsewhere? Um, how can we show our customers that we love and appreciate them and love them back? And so, you know, and, and, in that, and in that time, we made the program more inclusive to say, you know, the Macy's credit card, while it's still the best card to have um, and it will give you the best perks, we wanted to ensure that our program was inclusive for all. And so we expanded the program so that everyone gets rewarded every time you shop, regardless of how you pay. And now I am on our DE&I team. So I report into our Chief Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Officer, Sean Outler. And I lead our DEI marketing strategies, inclusive marketing strategies, and community partnerships. So in this role, I get the experience of, or the opportunity really to use my experience that I've had at Macy's to really impact the business and the culture at Macy's and the people doing the work at Macy's in a very unique way, um, which, which I've, I've really led into. And I'll be honest with you, I never thought I was going to be in a DEI-based role. Like, what does that mean, right? Um, you know what it means philosophically, right, and conceptually. Um, but it's been fascinating for me. It's been fascinating in my day-to-day. -day, what I enjoy the most is working with fellow colleagues like Keelan and others who are just being honest about not knowing at all, but we're committed to getting better every day. Um, and that's the kind of environment I think that we thrive in the most. Okay, I love that. So recently Macy's made an announcement about a commitment to $5 billion. Y'all heard that? <laughs> $5 billion for equity and sustainability goals. Do you wanna share a little bit about those goals yeah. and how you plan to achieve them? Yeah, we're super excited about this announcement. So we launched our social purpose platform. It's called Mission Everyone. And it's built on three pillars of impact. So communities, people, and the planet. And through that, we said, we're going to dedicate $5 million of our spend, whether it's products, programs, peoples, just true opportunities where we can show up to drive that more equitable and sustainable future. Um, so we're really excited for how this will just be embedded throughout the company. All parts of the company are responsible for being part of Mission Everyone and part of this spend. So it's not just the merchants buying the product, it's the suppliers we work with, it's opportunities to support organizations like Harlem's Fashion Row. Um, so we're really, really excited for what's in front of us and knowing the impact that you know, somebody like Macy's can really have. Yeah, yeah. 
So this $5 billion commitment definitely was like the headliner, right? Um, that was the signature <laughs> commitment, as we call it. But we have a few other commitments as well. And I appreciated Kimberly, I don't know if she's still here, her remarks earlier as well around um, making sure that organizations set goals and be transparent about them, because that's the only way things get done. And, um, and so we've made other commitments too. Um, one is around the diversity of our leadership. Right, so we have uh, a goal to achieve 30% ethnic diverse representation at our director and above levels by 2025. And we've also made an investment to say we're going to invest $100 million by 2025 to nonprofit organizations that focus on well being and education for youth, and particularly youth that are in underrepresented communities. Um, and so, for me, being with the company for almost 20 years now, it is pretty neat to see that that evolution, not saying that we have made it, we're not at the cheerleader, I'm not rah rah in here, but we're on a journey, right? And to know that we established DEI as a company priority in the early 2000s, um, but back then it was around compliance, making sure everyone knew where to go if you wanted to file a bias complaint or we set up supplier diversity offices. Um, so we've been in the game, you know, we've, we've been on a journey for quite some time, but to see it culminate to what it is now has been pretty special. Um, you know, we, Brandis and I were chatting at lunch briefly and we launched about uh, 11 years ago now what's called the workshop at Macy's. And it was our way of saying, we need to create a sustainable program, no pun intended, but a sustainable program mm -hmm. that really allows women Asian, Black, Hispanic, Latino, uh, veteran, LGBTQ-owned businesses um, to really have tools and resources to grow their business to scale. And um, over these past 10 years that we've had the program, the, the next cohort begins next week, as a matter of fact, we've touched the lives of 175 brand owners, um, regardless if they have their business at Macy's or elsewhere. And so it's important, that is for us an important part to have as part of our DNA and our culture. Um, but you asked the question around what do we think, what do we have to do, how are we gonna achieve this? And I think you know, three thoughts come to mind. One, DEI and sustainability cannot be, just as Keelan said, one department over here on the yeah. west wing of the building. Yeah. Like, it needs to be something that every employee in our organization embeds and, and how they think, act, and operate. It's to be the lens of all the decisions that we make. We need to be, like, through that lens, we need to be making decisions. Um, and we believe that that is, first and foremost, the way that we're gonna achieve these, these lofty uh, goals. Um, the second, you know, I would say is having diverse representation at the table as well in those key decisions. Mm -hmm. I was reminded recently of John Lewis's remarks when he says, or when he said, excuse me, um, you know, if you don't have a seat at the table, you're probably on the menu. And every time I hear that, mm. I, I get chills, right? Yeah. Because it's so true. It's it is, so true. And so that's why it's important that when doing business with organizations, right, um, that we look at the diversity of the, you know, the makeup of the organization. Um, that's important. And so we are focused on the hiring and the promotion and the retention of diverse colleagues as well. And then the last thing I would say is how we're going to achieve it is, is really no more, no, no temporary initiatives. We need to be in the game, mm -hmm. you know, the long haul. And I think that's one reason we don't progress sometimes enough as a society is that we are doing a lot of band-aid approaches and one-off, one-time programs to kind of solve and address the issue. And so I think us being in the game, I think of what you're doing with HFR and when I, you even do, Misa, with the Fashion Academy. Like, Thank you. you're in it. You're creating an anniversary in programs year over year and you're touching lives um, yes. for a long time. So I think those are the, the things that will really help us achieve those goals. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, so we have so many fashion designers and brands here today. Can you share a little bit about why it's crucial for a brand as large as Macy's to focus on equity and sustainability? Yeah, the, um, I love a good quote, so I'm going to say another one. Bear with me. <laughs> with great power comes great it's responsibility. Responsibility. Right. And mm -hmm. oh, you, you felt it. You felt that one too. Okay, <laughs> I'm with you. I love it. Um, and that's so true. Companies like ours, 
Macy's is included in this, but companies like ours need to remember it's not just about um, mm -hmm. you know, just, just writing the check and, and, and being done with it, right? And use it as a tax write-off. It's so much more than that. It's investment, so yeah. you know? And so I think for us, that's, um, that's a big piece. And what we do in our business is so personal. Like, we are a retailer. Yeah. We are in the people business. It is our job to match products to people mm -hmm. from all different walks of life um, and give them what they are looking for mm -hmm. um, and what they value. I mean, you trust us in your home, yeah. right? Like, if you think about it that way, too, like, we're in your home. We're mm -hmm. in your home when you buy the comforter set from Macy's. Yes, we're on sale. No, I don't know. Friends and family. Friends and family. Friends and family. Um, friends and family. No, no, no. But, but, but you see what I'm saying, right? You trust us to be in your home. You trust yes. us for what you wear on your body, mm -hmm. whether it's your Misa Hilton cardigan or mm -hmm. cosmetics you might buy. Yes. You, you trust us in your home when you're watching the parade with your loved ones for mm -hmm. Thanksgiving. And so when you think about the millions of customers we touch and the vendors we do business with and the employees we have, we have a responsibility to get this right, you know, and that's what we're committed to doing. And if we don't, future generations, and if we don't use our platform is how, I, how we look at it mm -hmm. to, do, to do this work, um, then we're not doing our part to make sure that future generations thrive. Yeah, and just thoughts? to build on what Simone's saying, I mean, we're America's department store. That's, that's how we talk about ourselves, and we take that very seriously. It's very exciting, it's really uh, special to be able to think of yourselves as that important to the American consumer, but with that comes that mm -hmm. responsibility, and therefore we right. have to show up. And when I think about you know, sustainable product and what we need to do, we need to make it easy for you to shop with confidence when you wanna buy sustainable product. We need you to know that we're investing in how we're driving our private brands to be more sustainable. And we've put out some pretty big goals for ourselves to you know, have more preferred uh, materials in our private brand product. At the same time, you know, we're looking at even, how do we go beyond just the product that shows up to you, the customer, when you buy it at Macy's and bring it home, to how is the product made? We, we have a very high level of social compliance that we require for the factories that make our private label products. We want to take it to the next level. What's our worker well-being program? How do we actually invest in the workers that are in these factories? How do we teach them about health and finance so that they are more educated, but that they can bring it home to their own families, their own communities, I that they that. can be empowered? Yes. So it's taking that step further. And then the other piece that the customer, I hope, doesn't see, but we believe is super important, is how do we run our business? So you know, we talk a lot about greenhouse gases and the emissions and what's our impact. And retail has a huge impact on the uh, total environment and, and the commitments that we need to make. And so we're excited. We're about to embark on setting science-based targets as an organization so that we are signing up for the commitments we will be making to drive for that sustainable future. Yes, agreed, agreed. So what are some best practices that you wish all fashion brands and fashion designers new yeah. around sustainability? I'd say you can do it. You don't have to give up on your principles. You don't have to give up on your aesthetic. You don't have to give up on what is important to your brand. But find a place that you can make sustainability incorporated into your product. It could be to the product that you're using. And yes, that might come with a price increase, but maybe there's a way to do it where you're actually just avoiding certain chemicals or you're avoiding certain processes. So it's not necessarily adding that cost. Or is it, again, looking at the factories you're using, looking all the way into the supply chain to make sure the workers are being taken care of. So what's kind of your way to bring it into your brand and make sure that it's meaningful to you? Because if it's not meaningful to you, then it's not going to translate to the customer. But, yes. but you can find a way, and you don't have to go all the way to a, a B Corp designation. You don't have to go all the way. <laughs> you know, start, start on what's manageable. Start on where you can start, um, depending upon kind of where your brand is. And as your brand grows, hopefully more resources come with it, more scale and opportunity comes with it. But really, everybody can do something. They just have to define it for themselves. I love that, Keelan. I think sometimes it's intimidating as well. People yeah. hear this big word, sustainability, yes. you know, sustainability. It's yes. like, and what you said about um, staying true to your aesthetic mm -hmm. and those things, that was really good. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. I would say the best practice I would recommend, what comes to mind is just really um, having, having a story attached to your product and yeah. own it. That's good. And own yeah, it. Um, mm -hmm. You know, one of those statements that uh, again, here I go with another quote. Get ready, brace yourself. <laughs> One of the statements I loved from actually our, from our Mission Everyone launch was, the history of progress tells us that when we can own our story and pursue our dreams, we, we can change the narrative for everyone. 
And I think that sticks with me, and, and that's why the best practice around is telling your story. Because mm -hmm. we're humans, we have this yearning to connect. And, and we know that our consumers these days especially are shopping with their values and with their emotions. And so share your story. Do not assume that big companies like Macy's has it all figured out. Right. We are learning sustainability together. Right. Um, and so I, I encourage you, I encourage myself, I encourage all of us to just figure out what is that story and make it come from you. And we've seen, um, we've seen this type of breakthrough storytelling really work for many others. Mm -hmm. I, I, I think about just the cherry blossoms and, mm -hmm. and learning about the, that symbolism, you know, yes. for you I, I, and hearing that. I, I think about um, Yelitsa, who is the founder of, of um, Healthy Roots. And as a black woman shopping for toys, dolls, she did not see dolls that looked like her. Mm -hmm. And the impact, and she shares in her words, the impact of what it was like to, to feel not seen, to not feel beautiful, to mm -hmm. not feel worthy. And she wanted to do something about it. And so she created Healthy Roots Dolls and educational storybooks that help empower young women and young girls to embrace their natural hair, their curls, their roots, um, their skin complexion, just love, them, love themselves the way that they are. And she's empowering other women to think the same way and, 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 and be entrepreneurs in that same space. I think of Terry, the founder of Harlem Candle Company, who in her kitchen in Harlem made candles in 2014. And she, in her words, manifested her love of jazz, of music, of history, of wanting to honor Harlem and its notable residents and landmarks and ties it into certain scents. That's uniquely her story. Mm -hmm. And that is what we use in our marketing campaigns to really connect with customers. So long-winded way of saying, um, the best practice I would say is just own that story. Don't lose yourself. Mm -hmm. um, tell that story. I want to hear it. We yeah, want to hear it and customers want to hear it too. Amazing. Yeah. Okay, so thank you for speaking with us today. But before you leave, I want you to complete this sentence for me, okay? okay. Sustainability means blank to me. Keelan, you want to go first, Simone? Okay. No more quotes. I won't okay. do <laughs> I'm done. I'm done. But thank, you. But thank you so much for humoring me throughout the process. Um, I would say the word that comes straight to my mind is longevity. The idea of it's, it's about making decisions for the long term, again, back to my point earlier, and mm -hmm. not just for being in the moment, which means we may not see the, the benefits of that, of that decision in our current lifetime. We need to be okay with that. Yes. So I think of the word longevity. Mm -hmm. Sustainability means longevity to me. Yeah, so uh, again, I'm still pretty new in my new role, and actually my team member here, Lori Rando, taught me something in uh, my first week on the job, and so now I'm stealing it as my own. Um, but sustainable means continually to, continuing to improve. We're never done. There's always going to be the next thing to do and the next thing to do. Mm -hmm. And so it's all about that continuous improvement and that you can continue to have an impact. But there's always going to be the next challenge or the next need for us to respond. And I think that that's just so important to not let that be frustrating, but actually let that be motivating. Mm -hmm. That every year is something new you could tackle as you go down a sustainability journey. And that, that's what I'm super excited about for, mm -hmm. for my new role and, and for where Macy's is headed. Awesome. All right, Lisa, what about you? Yeah, I know. Yes, I'm going to hear what you got to say. <laughs> for me, sustainability means remixing and repurposing. Mm -hmm. And I make that a part of my practices in fashion, styling, and design. That's awesome. Love it. Love it. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. So I wanted to also take a moment to say congratulations on the launch of the second cohort of designers for the Icons of Style at Macy's. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. We're so so excited. you guys make sure you check out uh, the new designers for this year yes. for Icons of Style. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>